Okay, in this video, we're going to look at a proposition regarding the Laplace transform of some derivatives. So let's just recall that the Laplace transform is defined as follows. So we say the Laplace transform of f is the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t e to the minus st dt. Sometimes we call that capital F. And so here, under this mild assumption that the limit as t goes to infinity of the rth derivative of f uh, times e to the minus st equals 0, for s bigger than s0, then we have the Laplace transformation of the nth derivative of f is equal to s to the nth power, the Laplace transform of the original function, minus this sum. So notice in this sum, the powers of s are going down as the derivatives are going up. So um, after we prove this, we'll look at a couple of examples of this. And I also have a video where we look at the first derivative um, version of this proposition. So uh, we're going to prove this proposition by induction. Um, and notice that the base case would be the case when n equals 0. And we get the Laplace transformation of the zeroth derivative of the function is equal to s to the zero times the Laplace transform of the zeroth derivative of, the, of, a, of the function minus an empty sum. But notice an empty sum is equal to zero. So in fact, the base case is, is purely trivial. You just get uh, something is equal to itself and there's no work to do at all. Okay, so from here we're going to move on to the induction hypothesis. So let's suppose this is true for n equals k, and then consider the k plus 1 case and show that it's true for that case as well. So the k plus 1 case will be as follows. We want to look at the Laplace transform of the k plus first derivative of the function t. And we're going to look at that using the definition of the Laplace transform. So notice that this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of the k plus first derivative of t uh, times e to the minus st dt. Okay, great. But uh, notice here we can attack this with integration by parts. We'll let u equal e to the minus st, and then we'll let dv equal to the k plus first derivative of our function f. Okay, great. So now notice that's going to let du be minus s e to the minus st dt using the chain rule for the derivative. And then that's going to let v equal f, the kth derivative of f. Okay, great. Now we've got our entire integration by parts set. And now notice that's going to give us the following. So that's going to give us, since this is an improper integral, we're going to have the limit as capital T goes to infinity of u times v evaluated at capital T, which is going to infinity, and then u times v evaluated at zero. So let's look at that. So that's going to give us the kth derivative um, evaluated at t times, sorry, evalu yeah, evaluated at capital T, e to the minus s capital T. Okay, great. We have that. But now that's also minus that stuff evaluated at zero, but that stuff evaluated at zero is um, the kth derivative of f evaluated at zero times e to the zero, but e to the zero is one. So we get this term. Okay, fantastic. And then this is going to be minus uh, VDU, but notice uh, DU has a minus S in it, so that's going to give us plus S, and then VDU, so notice that's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of the kth derivative of F e to the minus ST dt. Okay, great. But now notice here, we get that this is equal to uh, negative the kth derivative evaluated at 0 plus s 
times, notice that's the Laplace transform of the kth derivative. So plus s times the Laplace transform of the kth derivative of t. So notice we have the Laplace transform of the k plus first derivative written in terms of the Laplace transform of the kth derivative. So um, I'll clean up the board, and then after I clean up the board, uh, we'll start from this part of the equation, finish it off. Okay, so we left off at this point. We had the Laplace transform of the k plus first derivative was s times the Laplace transform of the kth derivative minus the kth derivative of f evaluated at zero. So now all that's left is to apply the induction hypothesis and then uh, push everything together. So notice this is going to be the s times the Laplace transform of the kth derivative, but we've assumed that this formula is true for the kth derivative, so that means we can write this as sk, the Laplace transform of the original function, minus the sum j equals 0 to k minus 1 of s uh, k minus 1 minus j, uh, the jth derivative evaluated at 0 minus this. Okay, great. So we're left with this bit. Okay, great. So now what we can do is distribute this s through, and notice that's going to give us s plus 1 times the Laplace transform of the original function minus the sum j equals 0 to k minus 1 of s k minus j, the j derivative evaluated at 0, and then minus another term, which is the kth derivative evaluated at 0. But now what we can do is notice that we can put this term inside this sum because it follows the form of this sum and just uh, change the upper bound from k minus 1 to k. That's going to give us, uh, again, the k plus first uh, power of s, the Laplace transform of f minus the sum j equals 0 to k of f sorry, of s, k minus j, and then the j derivative evaluated at zero. But notice that is exactly this formula with k plus one um, plugged in. In other words, we have proven by induction that this formula is true. Okay, good. I'm going to clean up the board and we're going to look at several cases of this. Okay, so now that we've established this formula in general, I'm going to look at a couple of common um, applications, and these are the kind of uh, times you would use this formula for solving differential equations in a first course in differential equations. So let's look at this first one. So notice this is going to be S times the original Laplace transformation minus the function evaluated at zero. Okay, good. And now notice this next one is going to be s squared times the Laplace transformation of the original function. And then it'll be minus s times the original function minus uh, the derivative evaluated at zero. So we'll get something like this. Okay, good, and now let's look at one more. So this is going to be s cubed times the Laplace transformation of the original function minus s squared times the original function evaluated at zero minus s times the derivative evaluated at zero minus uh, the second derivative evaluated at zero. Okay, so again, those are kind of common times you would... Uh, use this formula in order to solve a differential equation, which we'll do in a next video. All right, this is the end of the video.